How's it going everybody? It's PM Dre back with another video and in today's lecture we're going to be talking about hydrolyzed whey and casein. I was going to be talking about blends but then one of my fathers told me hey it'd be great if you could talk about these proteins as well. So I'm like you know what sure why not let's do it. So now let's talk about hydrolyzed whey. So hydrolyzed whey pretty much goes through even a higher filtration process than isolate. This process is usually called enzymatic hydrolysis. So what this happens, the components that make up the protein, so we could say the amino acids, are actually pre-digested. So when it gets into your bloodstream, it actually gets into your muscles a hell of a lot quicker. So when we compare it to isolate, again, um, we said with isolate it takes about 60 to 90 minutes. So with the hydro weight, this can actually go between 45 to 60. I would say, you know what, 60 is probably that medium as how far or how quick it could actually get into your bloodstream and into your muscles. So when we talk about the benefits of hydrolyzed whey, to me personally, I feel like there's not that much benefits because, oh yes, it gets into my muscles very quickly. Okay, great. That is about it. Though another thing that you gotta consider, a lot of these hydrolyzed ways do come with other stuff in them to actually ramp up um, some of the benefits that they offer as far as BCAs, glutamine, which we've talked about in prior videos. So as far as does it really, really um, deserve the high price tag or the higher price tag that it gets compared to other whey proteins? And I must say, no. Um, the reason why I say this is because, again, it's not that much different from an isolate. Yes, it's a lot cleaner. Yes, it's filtrated a lot more. But keep in mind, the higher the filtration, you're going to actually lose a lot of nutrients and so on that you usually get in the others. And another thing is, it's just I just don't see the value in actually taking it. Even if you're a natural lifter, I, there's really no competitive advantage as far as even taking hydro way. So that's my personal opinion on that and the information that I have from what I've found. So now let's talk about casein. So casein is actually a different type of protein because it's actually made up of 80% milk. So what does this mean? So it takes a lot longer for your body to actually absorb it. And you know what? I could see a lot of benefits in a particular type of protein like casein. And the number one benefit is it pretty much gives your body a constant supply of amino acids, proteins that your body can use or your muscles could use for a longer period of time compared to the others. So as we said, with our concentrate, it takes a bit more. With isolate, it gets into the muscles quickly. Same thing with hydrolyzed, 60 to 90 minutes. With casein, there have been studies that have shown that it can stay within the, in the bloodstream now, in the bloodstream for up to four hours. And even and in some other studies, a lot longer than that. So just think about that. You're getting a constant supply of protein to your muscles for a longer period of time. So this is a huge benefit as far as if you, whether you want to maintain your lean muscle mass or if you're bulking, you're still maintaining what you have while you're still growing muscle. So mixing in casein um, is not really a bad idea. Uh, one benefit is you can actually take it even in the evening or maybe at night before you go to bed and that just pretty much kind of gives you, okay, you know what, a constant supply of protein while you're sleeping. Another time you could also be taking casein is maybe right after your workout. So maybe you might want to mix it in maybe with an isolate so you'll have something that gets into your bloodstream quickly and then you follow up with a casein that will constantly supply after that big spike that you get from the isolate. So again, me personally, I do not take casein. And again, realizing the benefits and what it can offer, it's like, hey, why don't I take it? And the main reason being, again, it is 80% milk protein, and I'm not good when it comes to digesting lactose in that sense. And I also do get a good amount of lactose already in my diet. I love having Greek yogurt. So you're gonna get casein in milk or dairy products in themselves. So some things you can actually try out is uh, some cottage cheese, 
uh, Greek yogurt. Like these are, all of these particular things have casein in it. So that's part of the reasons why I don't supplement with casein protein powder. And usually when I do have these particular type of product, like the cottage cheese or the Greek yogurt, I usually have it in the evening as well. So again, I just wanted to kind of inform you guys as far as with casein, I almost forgot. I was about to end the video and I almost forgot. Another benefit with the casein protein is that is the satiety that is in it. Because it stays in your gut a hell of a lot longer than the others, um, it actually makes you feel full a little bit longer. So in a way, this is a really good thing because there's a good chance of whether you're trying to lose weight, it'll actually keep your pretty much your appetite at bay because you're not gonna eat more food if you already feel saturated, if you already feel okay, like if you don't feel like eating. So casein can really help in that sense. And even for a cut, maybe you're trying to lean down or you got a competition coming up, casein is great in the sense where, hey, you know what? You're already getting limited calories because you're trying to drop a lot of fat so you look lean. So why not use a casein so that'll help feed your muscles constantly throughout the day or making sure that you are not losing any of that lean body mass that you've worked so hard to get. So you wanna take this into consideration if you are looking at picking up a casein protein. As far as the price and the value, so it all depends on where you're getting it, but as far as value is concerned, I can actually say, you know what, it's fair. It is not overpriced. I, I find it, it, it's priced fairly for what it does and what it offers you and the benefits that you can actually get out of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture. So stay tuned for the lecture next week where we'll be talking about blends and some more information in regards to whey protein powders and how it can affect you on your fitness journey. So you know what we do here on the PM Dre Fitness Channel. Don't forget to share, that's right, Tell everybody that you know, that I don't know, that you watch my channel, like, that's right, like, comment, and subscribe. If you like this video and you wanna see more, then subscribe to my channel, like subscribe right now, and I'll catch y'all later.